Preparation characterizes the second Sunday of Advent. To understand the depth of this preparation, let us consider the meticulous preparation we make when expecting an esteemed guest or friend in our homes. There is a flurry of activity, cleaning, tidying, and the sweet aroma of air freshness filling the air. This attention to detail is not merely a social nicety, but a tangible expression of our longing and desire to extend hospitality to someone extraordinary or important. Advent too unfolds with a twofold character. It beckons us to prepare for the commemoration of the historical event of Jesus' birth at Christmas. Yet, it is also a season of preparing for his parousia, that is, the second coming, the end of time when Jesus will return in glory. These Sunday's readings guide us in understanding the significance of this preparation. First reading is taken from the beginning of the second part of the book of prophet Isaiah, known as Deutero Isaiah. After the first part of Isaiah chapters 1 to 39, which deals with the unfaithfulness of the Jews leading to their captivity and exile in Babylon under King Nebuchadnezzar II, who conquered Jerusalem, destroyed the temple, and deported many Jews to Babylon. The second part, chapters 40 to 55, that is the Deutero Isaiah, was written during the Babylonian exile. During this period of exile, the prophet Isaiah, or possibly a group of prophets and scribes following in his tradition, delivered messages of hope comfort and encouragement to the exiled community. These chapters express a tone of consolation, proclaiming God's intention to bring about redemption and restoration for the people of Israel. In today's first reading, the prophet Isaiah emphasizes the necessity of preparing the way for the Lord and making his path straight. This preparation is pertinent as the liberation from exile will see God leading the way for them. God's guidance will take them into Judah, within Judah to the city of Jerusalem, and within Jerusalem to Zion, the hill where the temple once stood. A striking truth remains here. Despite the impending liberation from exile, there remains a need for active collaboration to pave the way for the Lord. And this reminds us of St. Augustine's wisdom. The Lord who made you without your consent cannot save you without your cooperation. While it is true that Isaiah made this prophecy in the 6th century BC and was subsequently fulfilled with the conquest of Babylon by Persia, allowing those exiled from Judah to return home as God guided the exiles back from Babylon, Yet, on a deeper level, these words prophesy the advent of our Lord Jesus Christ. Isaiah's proclamation of the voice crying out in the desert, prepare a way for the Lord, make straight his path, anticipated the coming of John the Baptist, which we hear in today's Gospel reading, according to Mark chapter 1, verse 1 to 8. John the Baptist was a quintessential figure proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. Mark, in quoting prophet Isaiah in today's first reading, emphasizes the role of preparation, resounding the prophet's call for the leveling of valleys and the smoothing of rough terrain. John's clarion call to repentance echoes Isaiah's message, emphasizing the spiritual groundwork necessary for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. In parallel, the second reading from 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 8 to 14 reinforces the urgency of our preparation. The passage reminds us that God's timing is beyond our understanding. A day can be like a thousand years, and a thousand years like a day. God's patience is not reluctance, 
but a desire for all to be brought to change their ways. Our preparation, therefore, should transcend the material aspects that often preoccupy us during this season. Why food, clothing, and other worldly preparations are to be done moderately, the crook lies in the spiritual readiness, our spiritual preparation to meet Christ. Beloved friends in Christ, in this season of Advent, let our preparations be centered on the reception of the sacrament, especially the sacrament of reconciliation, that is confession, and the Holy Eucharist. Just as God led the exiles with tender care, let us allow God to guide us through our spiritual landscape, paving the way for Christ's presence in our hearts. Ultimately, as we approach the Holy Eucharist in today's liturgy, we open ourselves to receive Christ, not only in the celebration of his historical birth, but in the anticipation of his glorious return. May our Advent be a time of intense spiritual reflection and preparation, where our hearts become a welcoming abode for the Lord who comes to us at Christmas and who will come again at the last day. Amen. The Lord be with you. The Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. Our Savior dear to be.